Shifting focus for now, we tell you what is spooking the Pentagon. It is the growing cooperation between China and Russia in the Arctic. That's right, it's all about the battle for the Arctic. Let's tell you about what's happened. The Pentagon on Monday released its strategy for the Arctic. Now, what is this new strategy all about? Countering Russia and China. If I am to put it simply, this strategy proposes three lines of effort. Number one being enhancing the capabilities of the joint force. Number two, greater engagement with allies and partners. And number three, exercising U.S. presence in the Arctic. Look at what the Pentagon is suggesting really. Number one, the U.S. must invest more to upgrade its sensors in the Arctic. Number two, the U.S. must also invest more on communications in the Arctic. Number three, space-based technologies in the Arctic need to be upgraded. And why is that? To match the Chinese and the Russian prowess. So what really are these two countries doing in the Arctic that's spooking the Pentagon? Well, they are going big on developing the Northern Sea route in the Arctic and we have been telling you all about it. Also, the polar silk route that China is so keen on developing. When compared to the, to the Suez route, the Northern Sea route is faster, it saves time and energy. The Arctic Sea route is faster still. China calls itself a near-Arctic country, which is also the explanation for trying to play a bigger role in the region. Now, the truth is, China wants and it has its eyes on the Arctic minerals. As per the estimates of U.S. Energy Information Administration, there is 90 billion barrels of oil in the Arctic. That's how energy rich this region really is. What China also wants to reduce is its independence on the Strait of Malacca. This is where the U.S. has a strong presence, by the way. And what about Russia? What's in it for Moscow? The Arctic is literally Russia's backyard. So there are strategic interests at play here. Also, Russia wants an alternate shipping route. The Suez Canal route comes with a host of problems. First, the route passes near the NATO countries. Secondly, there is the Houthi risk at the Bab el Mandeb. Most of the Arctic Silk Route, on the other hand, passes through Russian waters before entering friendly Chinese territory. The renewed push to develop this route, this comes at a time when China is buying record levels of Russian oil as the West continues to block Russian energy, at least on paper. What happens behind the scenes with the third party oil purchases is a story that we have told you before. Also, like we have been telling you, Russia has nuclear powered ice breakers in the Arctic. It's the only country to deploy such ships. The nuclear ice breakers can sail through the Arctic cut through the ice, even in harsh winters. You see, Russia is determined to develop this region, but more than Russia, it appears as though it is the Chinese interest in the Arctic that is given, giving the Pentagon a headache. Beijing finds repeated mentions in the Pentagon's Arctic strategy. Let me just read out one of the lines for you. The Pentagon claims that China is looking to leverage, and I'm quoting, changing dynamics in the Arctic to pursue greater influence and access, take advantage of Arctic resources, and play a larger role in regional governance, quote unquote. Well, there is no doubt about any of this, but the question really is, why is America so bothered about Arctic? What stake does America really have in the Arctic? Let me just read out for you what America's Deputy Defense Secretary, Kathleen Hicks, said following the release of America's 2024 Arctic strategy. I'm quoting here, the Arctic region of the United States is critical to the defense of our homeland, the protection of U.S. national sovereignty and the preservation of our defense treaty commitments, quote unquote. Let's just pull out the map for you. Eight countries have presence in the Arctic, Russia, the US, Canada, Denmark, Finland, Iceland, Norway, and Sweden. The US has a base in the Arctic, as does Russia, which is the largest of all Arctic nations, by the way. Russia has reopened Soviet era military installations and continues to build its military infra in the Arctic. 
China, like we told you, calls itself a near Arctic nation and cooperates closely with Russia. This the U.S. finds threatening. The U.S. Department of Defense, in fact, in its press release mentions, I'm quoting, our Arctic strategy will guide the department's efforts to ensure that the Arctic remains a secure and stable region, quote unquote. And then you have Hicks claiming, and I'm quoting again, while not an Arctic state, the PRC seeks greater influence in the region, greater access to the region, and a greater say in its governance. That's concerning. Given that it's the only strategic competitor with the will and increasingly the wherewithal to remake the international order, quote unquote. So basically, the US is claiming that the growing cooperation between China and Russia in the Arctic could impact regional stability. How is that? It does not feel the need to tell. Of course, the Pentagon finds itself challenged. It wants to prepare for the worst. It is calling for more deployment of assets. It is pulling all its strings to try and match its adversaries, should a war break out. The US is also roping in its allies and NATO partners in its quest to beat Russia and China. For example, reports say this month, the US, Canada and Finland will form a consortium to build icebreaker ships. You know, the kind we told you Russia has. Now, will these ships also be nuclear powered? We will keep you posted as and when we find out more. To stay up to speed with the latest news, download the Weon app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.